Hello friends, Sniz here, and today I'm covering a hard lucid run I did as a Kana. I made a hard will guide, which I believe to be the harder boss of the two, but a friend of mine was asking around to see if a hard lucid guide for Kana existed, so here we are. Most of the principles are the same, bind when your foot is up, domain every other bind, and communicate with your team. I cannot stress enough how important it is for the Kana to communicate with the team. I'll apologize up front and admit that this guide isn't well structured, but I plan to talk alongside the run and comment on things that I did that made this run smoother. First off, please keep in mind that Kana has two binds, a 10 second bind and a 15 second bind, which I'll refer to as short and long bind respectively. After entering Lucid, you'll head to the middle of the map and charge domain immediately. Ensure you're fully charged before attempting to bind, but again, communicate this with your party. A 5 second heads up goes a long way and allows your party members to pop their burst buffs and make better use of the bind, which in turn makes part 1 smoother. After binding, try to place a purple barrier on top of your party members so they don't have to adjust to get that extra damage buff. Alerting them to where you place it is also helpful in case you have multiple players in different places. After you have fully charged domain and bound, your major goals are to survive, so your party keeps the domain buff, and pink barrier in case bombs appear. Pink barriers have a unique property that allows them to block bombs to players or within the boundaries of the barrier when the bomb explodes. Your goal is to have everyone stack together within the barrier to avoid the damage altogether, but in case the barrier doesn't block the bomb damage, it'll be divided evenly amongst you and your party members. Do note that if your party does have a bishop, you may not need to do this at all. Shell from bishop accomplishes the same thing as pink barrier, though shell is much more reliable and doesn't require precise positioning to do its job. When it comes to binding, almost all party compositions will require you to use the foot bind, and will always use the foot bind when you bind. This is your hyper skill and what I refer to as long bind. This bind lasts 15 seconds and goes on cooldown for 2 minutes. In most parties, as mentioned prior, you'll be binding as soon as the skill is off cooldown. Most classes have burst buffs that range from 2 to 4 minute cooldowns, so the meta of binding every time the skill is ready, and using domain every other bind, fits the need for the majority of parties. Your party members should be alerting you ahead of time and before the run if they want or need a different timer on binds. Again, remember to keep communicating with your party. If you're not sure how often you should update them, a simple 30, 10, 5 second heads up should be more than plenty. And like the first bind and every bind in between, alert and place purple barrier on top of the party members as any buff is a welcome buff. As long as you're taking care to place the proper barriers when needed, this part of the site should go smoothly. In general, having a smooth part 1 gives your party more flexibility in part 2 when it comes to their life count and how much damage they need to do during binds. Okay. And then you can stay up. Oh my god, give me give me some Goku Force. I'm gonna auto steal a droplet off of one of these golems, I can feel it. That's definitely true. Let me out! Oh my god. I'm big damage. I can't get over there. I can't get. No, I can't. Okay, I am. Okay. Stupidity. Dragon! Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to dodge this dragon. I don't think we're gonna. Left, left. Alright, good luck! Oh, Merce is the god! He's so high. Look at him. Haha, <laughs> you fucking know it. <laughs> Uh, I have domain binds in like 30 seconds, I think. I'm gonna start charging after we enter phase two. Oh yeah, you blitzed it, didn't you? Sickles from mid, sickles from mid. When it comes to entering part two, it's a little tricky depending on your party. First, Lucid has a higher chance of sinking if you bind immediately upon entering part 2. To avoid this, either wait 15 to 30 seconds or hope she flies up high enough so that when you bind her, she doesn't sink below the map. There are a few scenarios that can result in different strategies when it comes to entering part 2. For some parties, you may have just bound with domain up to phase it into part 2. For other parties, you may have domain coming off of cooldown, meaning it wasn't up, and long bind is nearly off of cooldown as well. 
What I mean by this, in example A, you have just phased part 1. You had domain up and just used your long bind to ensure a clean burst. In this circumstance, I'd immediately use the short bind to allow the DPS classes to squeeze in some extra damage while they still have the domain and their own burst buffs active. In example B, domain and long bind are still on cooldown, which most likely means your DPS classes are on burst cooldown as well. So binding immediately does nothing helpful and will more likely hurt your overall clear time. You should wait until long bind is ready and if needed, wait until long bind and domain is ready to then bind. This is a much smarter option than binding immediately while most of your DPS do not have bursts ready to use. If you are not the only Kana in your party, just remember that one of you should be responsible for binding and be actively reminding the other to domain prior to your bind. Giving a 20 to 30 seconds heads up should be more than enough time to fully charge domain. There are some extra fringe cases where timing is not as clear cut as the two examples I gave. If this is the case, I'd play part 2 by ear and communicate with your party to figure out what you should be doing. If you run continuously with your party, you'll learn what to do depending on the situation. What you do changes with how much damage is being put out, which in turn changes how you phase into part 2 in the first place. Part 2 is very similar to Part 1 in what your duties are. The major change is Lucid is now a moving target, but how you handle Lucid does not change. You'll stick to binding when available and using domain every other bind. For bombs, most parties tend to use the middle platform to group up for a barrier, but if there's a dragon on the map and bombs occur, using the top right platform is also a very common place to put barrier. Thirty seconds. Dragon. Oh, this is gonna be fun. I don't have iframe. This is fun. Oh, oh. Okay, oh. Okay, okay. oh. No. My. Fuck. <laughs> I could have up jumped in. 10 seconds still bind. 10 seconds still bind. I've actually lost 3 lives. I'm a failure of a Kana. Alright, less than 5, less than 5, less than 5, less than 5. Binding. Binded. Oh, sickles are gonna come out though. Uh, sickles are out, she's bound. I'm gonna cleanse. Uh, yeah, I'm cleansing. We're burning these cleanses like. Everyone's above six lives, right? Yeah, I have nine. I have seven. Lucid is. Drag on. And we're not in danger of Toho either. Yep, sickle, we're good, we're good. Alana, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't sue me! Everyone's dying. All my friends are dead. I'm not. Next bind is domain bind. Just so y'all know. Bombs come mid. Oh, familiars. Yeah, that's true. I uh, actually my familiars don't matter. Fifty seconds. I still need to roll a familiar. Uh, do I cleanse now? No, I can wait a little longer. Forty sickles. Forty seconds till bind. Uh. Me? Yeah, I'm cleansing. Do I actually? Dragon, 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 dragon. Oh sh Uh lasers, lasers, lasers. I'm gonna charge. As the Kana, another one of your duties that I failed to mention that applies to both phase one and phase two is cleansing. Cleansing removes the butterflies that Lucid summons, and if too many butterflies end up appearing on the screen, it will proc an attack that will almost for sure kill you in phase one and will likely kill you in phase two but it is survivable in phase two much more survivable than it is in phase one it's difficult to explain when to cleanse because it's more of a feel there's visual cues of course like how many butterflies are there but it's difficult to say how many is too much because too much means you're already in the attack and too little means you're wasting the cleanse of course if your party is big strong then it doesn't really matter when you cleanse because you should always have a cleanse but there's always that what if I mean, not go, not go away. Go, my. Bomb, barriers down, barriers down. Uh, 
Is she? she? She's doing it now. She's on the right now. She did a U turn at the bottom. Sickles from top right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cleanse again. Okay, someone else cleansed. Or 50 seconds till bind. I'm big damage, look at this. Not hitting ones. Dragon. Thirty seconds still bind. Sickles. Uh, we're safe. We're safe. I think that's lasers. Oof. Right. Binds in fifteen. Eighteen, fifteen, middle. Got it. Ten seconds still bind. Gonna... Less than five. Less than five. Sickles. Binding, binded, cleansing. She fly. Yeah. Uh. Wait, why am I bombs, bombs, bombs. Work? Mid, barriers down. Uh -oh, Sickles, bail. Wait, wait, what? What? Oh, I think she went to where we were and then the sickles came up from where she was before. Oh, do you think? Sickles from bottom left, bottom left. I'm gonna have to cleanse again here. Dragon. Yeah, don't do it yet. We're last bar, by the way. Around the second to last health bar of part two, start paying attention to the time that the middle and middle top platform break. Considering these two platforms are where the majority of players place themselves while attacking phase 3, you want to ensure your party members won't get knocked off or have a platform break underneath them during phase 3. If you are unable to keep a timer on these platforms, I'd recommend you always go to the top middle platform so you have a decent chance of dropping to the middle platform with mild interruption to your DPS. You will be communicating the most when you are on the last health bar of part 2 lucid. To have a clean entry into phase 3, you want to ensure all of your party members have their burst buffs ready. Their buffs should be up around the same time Domain is ready to be used, so if Domain is ready to be used, check that your party members are ready to burst. Remember, you only have a 40 second window to clear Lucid, otherwise you fail. I think I should take a little time and pause right here to let you know, do not have your bubble on or Sengoku Force active. These two skills will break the reward box and your party will flame you. Continuing on, the general plan is to have Lucid on her last health bar and low enough that when you use your last long bind, your party members can clear the health bar before she can move again. Immediately after binding, start charging domain. In a perfect scenario, your team will have phased into part 3 right as you have finished charging domain to stage 3, which ensures your party has the highest final damage multiplier. After you finish charging, place a boss barrier on your party members and pray that your party is not knocked off and that you have enough damage output to clear. If you've done your part correctly, Domain will be up for the entire duration of Phase 3 and a boss barrier should have been placed where your party members are standing. As long as those two goals are met and you haven't summoned any stupid summons, you've done your job as the condom mule. If they fail to do enough damage, you can breathe easy knowing you did your part. Again, do not use Sengoku Force or have Bubble active. You are allowed to use Yuki, but if you use Yuki, do not have Bubble active. Yuki will attack as soon as anything hits the reward box. That means if Bubble attacks it, Yuki will go off. Continuing from that prior point, excluding Sengoku Force, do not attack if Yuki is out. Yuki, again, will start attacking as soon as you do, so you should wait until she disappears, and then you're allowed to hit the box if you believe that superstition. After that, wait for your party members to swap to drop gear if you're going to be breaking the box, or go and wait on the left-hand side or wherever you do. Make sure your pet loot is off if you don't have pet ignore. Good luck on your non-existent drops.